the Word of God. And uh, it's a battle that we believe that we must fight. And it's a battle that we believe in the church that we must take a stand in. Um, Amen. Uh, we uh, have been working this week with uh, Brother Danny Ray. From, uh, he's in our pastor at the First Baptist Church. And uh, we've drawn up uh, a couple petitions. One is uh, so that the church will have a voice. And the other so the community will have a voice. Um, we believe that if you do not stand, you strip away the power of God to do anything about a circumstance or a situation. Amen. Um, it's ours to stand. It's not ours to win or lose the battle, but it's ours to stand. Amen. The battle belongs to the Lord. Um, the issue is a uh, proposal and the approval of uh, um, a gay straight alliance a club in, in our high school there's a homosexual club and uh, we feel that it should have a place within our public school system um, this is the petition that we've grown up for the church i'll read that petition to you and the reason i'm reading it to you is so at the end of service today if you feel led we can and support it and uphold it will you please put your signature on it um, we're going to put it out through all the churches in Barron County, but there'll be those that will be in the, in the community also. Um, we are the body of Christ. This is about no denomination. This is about no particular church. This is about the body of Christ standing up for the truth Amen. and what's right according to the Word of God. Amen. Um, I'll read this petition to you, and then we'll get on with the service. It says, We the church of the living God believe that all forms of sexual immorality, including adultery, homosexuality, and pornography, are condemned by the Holy Scripture as sin. Such practices violate God's biblical standards for sexual purity and are equally destructive to healthy marital relations uh, and Christian social order. We affirm God's plan for marriage and sexual intimacy, one man and one woman. Homosexuality is not a valid alternative lifestyle. Living in adultery is not a valid alternative lifestyle. The Bible condemns it as sin. It is not, however, unforgivable <coughs> sin. The same redemption available to all sinners is available to homosexuals and all who commit adultery. Responsible pastoral care will seek to offer repentance and forgiveness, helping and healing and restoration through the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ's sacrificial gift of love on the cross. Therefore, we, the undersigned, petition the Barry County School Board not to allow any club or organization such as the Gay Straight Alliance that promotes homosexual lifestyle or any other club that would promote ungodly morals to our students or into any of our Barry County schools. And we want to have that at the end of the service today. Amen. If you have a Bible, you want to read along with us, Ezekiel chapter 33, if we look into the Word of God. There will be a meeting tomorrow night for uh, pastors and youth leaders. It will be at 6.30 at the First Baptist Church. Any and all in our community that will come. If you know a church or a church leader pastor that does not know about that meeting, would you please tell them? It will be tomorrow night at 6.30 at the First Baptist Church. There will be another board meeting on June the 8th. We've uh, filled out the paperwork to uh, hope to be able to be on the agenda for the next board meeting to have a voice so that the church can um, declare what truth is and take a stand. And um, I would hope and encourage everyone to be there on June day. The Bible said, Ezekiel chapter 33, begin to read in verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, uh, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, uh, if the people of land take a man of their coast, uh, and set him for their watchman, uh, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, uh, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, uh, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, uh, and taketh not warning, uh, if the sword come and take him away, uh, his blood shall be upon uh, his own head. Uh, 
and he heard the sound of the, the, the trumpet and took not warning, uh, his blood shall be upon him, uh, but he that taketh uh, warning shall deliver uh, his soul. Uh, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, uh, and people be not warned, and if the sword come uh, and take any person from among them, uh, he is taken away in his iniquity, uh, but his blood will I require uh, at the watchman's hand. Uh, so thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman uh, unto the house of Israel. Uh, therefore thou shalt hear the word and not let my mouth uh, and warn them uh, from me. Uh, and when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, uh, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, uh, but his blood will I require uh, at uh, thine hand. Uh, nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, uh, if he do not turn from his way, uh, he shall die in his iniquity, uh, but thou hast delivered uh, thy soul. Let us pray. Uh, our Father, we thank you for the day, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity we have to get together in your name. Uh, but I pray that you would bless the reading of your word. Uh, I pray that you'd anoint us from on high, God. Uh, but I pray that you'd undergird us with the word and with the truth, God. Uh, and Father, I pray that the spirit of truth uh, and the voice of truth will be heard uh, in this house today, God. Uh, I pray you prepare us in our heart uh, and our spirit that we might be able to receive it, God. Uh, but I pray that you would sit down upon us uh, with understanding and knowledge and wisdom and discernment. Uh, and Father, I pray that we can preach for the old ones of God. Uh, but I want to thank you for your faithfulness, God. Uh, but I want to ask forgiveness uh, where we have been unfaithful, God. Uh, but I pray in the name of Jesus uh, that you would help us, God, uh, to be a church uh, of the living God, uh, a church uh, that was founded uh, upon your word uh, and your principles uh, and your grace uh, and your mercy, God. Uh, but I pray that it will go forth even now, God. Uh, I pray that you would stir up among us uh, as the body of Christ. Uh, and Father, I pray uh, that you would allow the anointing uh, of the Holy Ghost to fall on us, God. Uh, Father, that we can rise up uh, as an exceedingly uh, mighty army, God. Uh, but I pray uh, that revival would come uh, to the graveyard, God. Uh, but I pray that you would raise up uh, them old dry bones, God. Uh, that ain't a little clanking uh, and a little rattling, God. Uh, I thank you for the stirring uh, that you're causing in our community. Uh, I thank you for the earthquake. Uh, that's going on in the kingdom, God. But I pray that it would draw us nigh unto thee, God. But I pray that we would forget about our agendas and what we have purposed and what we have planned. And Father, I pray that the body of Christ would come together in one mind and one accord. And Father, I pray the power of God would be like it was in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, God. I pray that you would sweep through there like a mighty rushing wind. You would fill every believer with the Holy Ghost, God. And Father, I pray that we can stand in an hour such as this, God. And Father, I pray that we be found standing on the side of the Lord, our God. Father, we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And amen and amen. amen. If we could have a call to the Lord, pray to our heart today. It would be wake up, you sleeping giant. Wake up, you sleeping giant. The Bible says in verse 1, again the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warn, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. As we look at Ezekiel chapter 33, in about 1810, 1812, there was an empire in France, and it was led by a man by the name of Napoleon Bonaparte. And Napoleon Bonaparte had a map spread before him, and he outlined the territories. It was a world map, but he took his finger and he outlined the territories of a nation. He said, there is a giant and he's asleep. He said, let him sleep. He was speaking about the nation of China. He said, for if he were to awake, he would shake this world. I'm here to tell you this morning that Satan has the same strategy and the same plan when he looks at the church of a living life today. He is not blind us and he has said, let her sleep because if she wakes up, he knows the potential and the power of the church of the living God to shake this world and to turn it upside down. 
you've been heard. The problem today is that many in this world have no foundation. If you have no foundation, you have nothing on which you are able to stand. We stand upon the Word of God. But there are many, my friends. The Bible is no longer the standard of our world.
And he said, if you do, and they don't heed, he said, then the blood is on their own head. You've done all I told you to do. You've done all that I asked you to do. You've done all that I commanded you to do. But if you do not do what I told you to do, then the blood is on your hands. You will find the wrath of God for the blood of the souls of men and women and those who come to the age of accountability who will find themselves in a devil's hell because they chose a life and a lifestyle that was ungodly and immoral and against the very nature of who God created them to be. The blood is on your hands. I don't want no blood on my hand. The only blood I want is Jesus' blood. The blood that has washed and cleansed my soul and forgiven me of my sins. That by the grace of God, I am not who I used to be, but I am who I am in Jesus Christ, my Redeemer, my Lord, and my Savior, great God. Listen to me. Why would you not sound the trumpet? Why would you not give the warning? Are you afraid that you might offend those with a trumpet black? Are you afraid that they might look at you and think he's crazy? There ain't nothing going on. Have you looked at the enemy and determined that, that they're so small and they're so weak that we can't do anything about it? Or maybe you look at the enemy and you said they're so powerful, they're so mighty, and we can't do nothing about it? What brought you to the determination that there's no need to sound the trumpet and to give the warning, praise God? Because he said in doing so, in doing so, he said, if you would have turned one away from his sins, just because you took a stand and you showed them through the truth of the word of God that this is not God's will, that this is not God's plan, this is not what God wants from you or your life, this is not pleasing to God. Not only is this a sin in the eyes of God, it is an abomination in the eyes of God. What if you stood and one soul came out of sin to find Jesus Christ that they're standing? But what if you don't stand and a multitude go to a devil's hell condemned in their sins? The blood is on your hands. Because you didn't sound the warning. You didn't sound the trumpet. The Bible said in Judges chapter 16 that Samson, who was anointed of God, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, he had strength beyond compare of any mortal man. But Samson was not a superhero looking guy like Superman would be or the Hulk would be. Samson, I believe with all my heart, I look cute. I, I believe he looked like any other normal man. I, I don't think he had muscles bulging out. Uh, if he had my friend, uh, Delilah would have never said, uh, where uh, do you get your strength? Amen. Tell me how you are so strong uh, that you can take a job on of an ass uh, and kill a thousand Philistines. Uh, where do you get this strength from uh, to take the gates and the post of a city uh, 20 miles uh, and ram down uh, on the mountain? Where do you get that kind of string to tear lines uh, in two with your hands? Uh, where does it come from? <coughs> Finally, the Bible says in Judges chapter 15 uh, that when he had told her all his heart, he said, the strength, my strength, uh, is in the fact that I'm a Nazarite uh, and I took that vow my parents did for me uh, from the time uh, I came forth of my mother's womb. Uh, he said, I, he said, he lied in the seven locks uh, of my head. Uh, he said, I can't cut uh, the hairs on my head. Uh, the Bible says uh, in verse 19 uh, that the lie uh, made him to sleep uh, upon uh, her back. Uh, and when Samson uh, went to sleep, uh, she called in a man uh, and he cut off the seven locks of his head. She began to afflict 
him and his streams went out from him. He just said that the Philistines are upon me and he rose up like he would have all the other times before but he did not know that the Lord was not with him. They took Samson and they gouged out his eyes. They took him to the prison house and they bound him to the wheel in the prison house. They made him a slave and the Philistines became his master. You want to know why? Samson went to sleep. Samson fell asleep in the lap of the lion. And Samson gave place to the devil and to the enemy and it stripped him of the very power of God that was in his life. Amen. The Bible said Ephesians 4, 27, give no place to the devil. No place. Not a little bit, not a short crack, not a hole, but seeing light at the door. And he said, don't open the door, praise God. Amen. Don't open the door for any reason. The only part of her consolation I take in Samson is that the hairs of his head begin to grow again. <clears throat> and Samson cried out to God, standing between the pillars at the house of the Lord of the Philistines, where were assembled 3,000 on the roof, not counting those that were inside. And Samson was there between two pillars. He asked the lad that was with him to take each hand and place it on a pillar. And Samson cried out to the Lord one more time.
14, 15, 16 years old, a ruddy little fella, that comes standing among men with armor and swords and spears, and here's David, and all he can hear is the tones of a giant on the other side of the battle. That was day 40, morning and evening. Day 41. Here he is. He just didn't know David was there. He didn't know David's anointing of God was even around to hear what he had to say. The Bible said that when David heard him, all the men of Israel fled. Now you get a picture. David's standing among them. They set the Bible in the rain. They see the giant. He's mocking them. He's making fun of them. All of a sudden, they're so fearful and afraid, they run the other way. There's no day. <laughs> they turn back and say, hey, what did God say he do? What did the king say he do for whoever went to battle against this giant? And they told him that, that the king said that he would give him great riches and that he would give him his daughter for wife and that he would set his father's house free who ever killed that guy. Amen. Eli of David's oldest brother. When you get ready to stand, you better be. Those that are closest to you, your friends and even your family will ridicule you Tell you there ain't no need to stand. You might as well go back home. Tending them sheep that you come from. Them few sheep that daddy left you in charge over. You might as well go back and take care of that business. Because you ain't got no business here. This ain't so bad with that. Amen. Come on, bro. David looked at Eden and turned around and said, What have I done to thee? He said, Is there not a call? He said, Edith, this ain't about you. I'm not fighting for you or against you. This is about my God and who I serve. This is about an uncircumcised Philistine who has defied the armies of the living God. My battle is not with my brother or my sister in Christ. My battle is not with the family of God. My battle is to get powers and bring the power. Come and attack him away. We have to stand. 
we could have stood and should have stood in times past. We lay down. Let the devil be away. This is amazing. You can't get angry and you can't hate. You can't fight this battle man. He was ministered in the spirit of grace and truth. And that's the way we have to minister. Now let me explain something to you. The proponents of this club hide behind scripture. The proponents of this club claim to be Christian. And they hide behind the word of God. And in the proposal that they sent to the board, the first paragraph, second paragraph, 1 Corinthians 13, about what real love really is. And they say God is love. And because God is love, He loves everybody, accepts them just like they are, Love them for who they are and who they choose to be and the lifestyle that they choose to live. Therefore, we ought to love everybody and support them and encourage them in that lifestyle. There is no doubt about it. God is love. Because John said he was. <laughs> there is no doubt about it. God is peace. Because he is Jehovah Shalom. There's no doubt about it. He is the Lord our righteousness because He is the righteous judge. There's no doubt about it. God is the hope in the future that we have. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it that the Lord is joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. There's no doubt about it. But for those who would stand behind God as well, are not taking God in His hope. They're only taking God for part that they want to support their agenda and their lifestyle. You will never find in the Word of God for God is anything three times except in Isaiah chapter 6 when the Bible said that God is holy, holy, holy. Three times He is the thrice holy God. The Bible does not say God is love, love, love. It does not say God is peace, peace, peace. It says God is holy, holy, holy. And because God is holy, God demands, demands that sin be condemned. God is a holy God. He loves sinners, but he hates the sin. He does not tell us to support a sinful lifestyle, to promote a sinful lifestyle, to even give our approval for a sinful lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Because God is holy, holy, holy. God's holiness cannot be compromised. It will not be compromised. And the reason that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to die on the cross was not just because God so loved the world. Jesus became a sacrifice for sin because sin had to be dealt with because of the holiness of God. God. The 
Bible says in Hebrews 10, 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. There is no fear for God today because there is no regard for the holiness of God. Because if we really saw God as holy, 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 our fear would not be of men. It would be of God. Because we all must stand before Him and give an account one day. Every one of us will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of us. Every one of us. Every one of us. I will not answer for you. You will not answer for me. Yeah. <clears throat> Every one of us. <clears throat> Peter said in chapter 4, the first epistle that he wrote, the judgment must begin Thank you. 